Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to give you some more stabby reviews. So this is primarily horror and thriller books that I'm talking about today. A lot of new releases, some new favorites, some books with a lot of good potential that maybe missed the mark, we'll discuss. Including in this list is a book that was really, really dark and is kind of hard to review and discuss based off of the subject matter, but we'll get into that all. Hopefully you stick around and let's get started. First, let's talk about Black Mouth by Ronald Melfi. This is a new horror book that came out from Titan Books, which I received a copy from. And this is a story that follows a man who has been struggling with his life as an adult. He's been in and out of rehab and is reluctantly coming back home to where he grew up. He has really lost touch with his disabled brother and now is trying to rekindle that when he is kind of forced to come back home. This is a coming of age story. You find out that as children, these boys got involved with a magician. There is a story that possibly gets a bit supernatural and the story goes from there. This is one I was very excited to read because if you don't know, Ronald Melfi is one of my favorite horror authors. I've talked about him so many times on my channel. Some of my favorite books by him are December Park as well as his book last year, Come With Me. And so I was very excited for this new book, hoping it would be another favorite. What I like about Ronald Malfi is that he tells a good story. And I would say that that is still true with this one. If you like coming of age narratives, this one has all of those elements and it definitely will ring true to that style of story. And so within this book, I will admit that the beginning started out a little bit slow. It starts focusing on his time in rehab, which just isn't really a subject or an area that I find very interesting. But once the story got going, he returned back to his hometown to Blackmouth and you actually started to see him interact with his brother, deal with the house and start to recount their childhood. That's when I got invested in the story. That's when the narrative shipped that like nostalgic narrative voice that you always see in these coming of age stories. So you have an adult who is looking back with, of course, an adult perspective on their youth and trying to interpret and make sense of all those messy events. And so I really do like those elements. I thought he did them well. I will say that this book definitely is reminiscent of a lot of other horror books that are in this style. So if you like It by Stephen King, a lot of people have compared that to this or vice versa. And I see those references, but not quite as much. For me, I saw more of Boy's Life and even more, I saw Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. So if you like those books and are looking for a new comp to try out, this is one that you might really enjoy. I liked it, but for me, it was a little bit long and it just didn't quite have the spark or just that like kind of magical touch that made me like fall in love with the book. It had all the elements I liked but again it just wasn't quite perfect which is maybe me being critical because again I have such high expectations when I pick up a Ronald Melfi book just because I know he can be a favorite and so when this one fell a little bit short for me I do feel like I was maybe a bit hard on this one when reading it. I liked it. I would still recommend it. Just know that it's not his very best. Next up, we have The Last Storm by Tim Levin, and this is another book I received for review from Titan Books. In the store, we follow a man named Jesse who has the ability to call the rain. However, he has stopped doing so for various reasons, one of them being the fact that he believes that he has caused the death of his own daughter. And in the beginning of the story, you find out that is not the case. She is actually alive, and the story goes from there. This is a post-apocalyptic story, so it's very action-based. I will admit that post-apocalyptic fiction is not necessarily my favorite favorite, but I requested this one for review because of the fact that I've really enjoyed several of Tim Levin's previous books. I think that he does action really well. I think he does a really good job of creating a page turner, and that's what I've loved about his previous books. This one felt a little bit slower to me. It started out a bit slower, and while it did pick up within the narrative, I just never got quite as attached to it, and I think it's the fact that I felt like Tim Levin was really trying to write more of a character-driven narrative this time, which would be fine if he was a stronger character writer. I just don't find that he writes really robust, interesting characters. They all felt a little bit flat and generic. I think this would make a fine, exciting, short thriller horror action movie. But in terms of a story, it was good, but it never again really grabbed my imagination. It never got me really excited. It wasn't something I haven't seen before in one form or another. So I like this one, but I'll be honest, I didn't love it. I do find it to be a little not so memorable. And so if you love post-apocalyptic fiction. Maybe you'll like this one a lot more. But again, I don't think it's Tim Levin's best. I would recommend something else by him, like The Silence. 
Next up, we have The Black Slide by J.W. Oker, and this is a middle grade horror book. If you're new to my channel, I do primarily read adult fiction, but every once in a while, a book targeted at a younger audience grabs my attention. This is one that I accepted for review from the author and publisher because I have read this author's previous work and really loved it. This is another author that I do consider to be a favorite. They're basically on my list of if they put out a book, regardless of genre, type, age group, whatever, I want to read it. So this particular book, as I mentioned, is middle grade, but I do think that it works for an all ages audience. We follow a young boy who, along with his friends at school, notice that a new slide has been put up in their playground. This slide is just a little bit weird. It's one of those tunnel slides where once you go in, it's all dark inside until you get to the bottom. And it's done with different material. It's not plasticky. Instead, it's got this like black leather and it just looks really, really creepy. I thought the description of the slide alone was great. I don't always have the best imagination in terms of like visual imagery when it comes to reading books, but in this case, the way the slide is described, I could picture it perfectly and I thought it was just fantastic. So as you can guess, as this being a horror book, there is something not so right about the slide and when kids go into the slide, well, maybe they don't come out. Maybe kids are disappearing. Maybe things are going wrong. Maybe the slide is evil or there is some evil entity behind the slide. I love the premise of this book, so I happily said yes to review viewing it and I'm really happy to say that it really held up to the potential. I thought that the premise was great and the execution worked fantastically. If you can tell, I really enjoyed this one and again, I'm an adult in my 30s. I do not have a child that is middle grade reading age so I was reading this for myself and thoroughly enjoyed it. So I do think as long as you're an adult who is open to reading middle grade, this is a really excellent place to start and for those of you with children, nieces, etc., whether they have a birthday or thinking ahead to Christmas, this is the kind of book I would definitely gift if I had someone in that age group to read and review a book like this because I do think it was just really fun, a little bit spooky, and that's something I find. Like, even though this is middle grade and supposed to be for younger children, I would say that this is spookier or creepier than a lot of the adult horror I've read this year. So, I don't get me wrong, it's not like a book that is going to like keep me up at night and, you know, not be able to sleep, but is it spooky? Is it a little bit creepy? Yeah, and it just totally worked. It was so much fun. I think this is a great place for someone who is trying to get a new generation into reading horror or just simply, again, for adults like yourself that just want something a little bit fun and nostalgic. Next up, we have Anybody Home by Michael J. Seilanger, and this is a book that I received for review from Clash Books, and I gotta be honest, this is a book that is really hard to articulate my thoughts around it, so I will do my very best, please be patient. This book is told in a second person perspective from the perspective of a house invader who has selected their next victims, and so the whole story is read as you are doing this, you are seeing this, and this is a very literary take on a home invader story. So I will say if you're looking for a very traditional narrative where you're just reading a story and the characters are going along, you're not necessarily going to get that here. So I would say I was surprised this book does not read like a movie. I kind of thought it would just be like reading scenes of like the people show up, they tie them to the chair, all of that. Instead this book is almost very philosophical or perhaps like an introspection on the idea of a home invasion, what inspires someone to do this act, how does it come across? Is it planned? Is it senseless? Is it targeted? This book is definitely still classified as a horror thriller, but I wouldn't compare it to something like Intensity by Kuntz. I think that if you're looking for something like that, this book is going to be totally different and might really sideline you. But I really did enjoy this book for what it was once I kind of got orientated to the kind of book it turned out to be. If you're not aware, the author has actually experienced a home invasion themselves, and so while this is a piece of fiction, this is very much inspired by their own life events, and so I think that that element just brought a level of seriousness and darkness to the story that just made it oh so more compelling. This book also reminded me of a book I just recently read and reviewed and that was The Three Days in the Pink Tower because once again it was involving a home invasion that was inspired by real events. So if you're looking for like a fun horror read as I often describe on my channel, I do have a really wicked sense of humor when it comes to dark things that I do 
tend to enjoy stories about really messed up subject matter, but the fact that this author has gone through similar events themselves made this book very sobering. So I can't say I had fun reading it. I can't say it was an entertaining read. It wasn't just like a thriller to fly through. Instead, again, it was very thoughtful and it was very quiet in a way, more than you would expect for, again, a home invasion story, but it was very dark. It definitely went to some very disturbing places. And I think that the framing of the story was just, again, very original, but then also was a really good way to kind of capture my attention. So if I'm looking for something new and fresh to read, which I always say I am, this book is that. I don't know where this is going to end up on my final rankings for the year. At the moment, I've given it four stars, but I definitely want to reread it. And it's very possible this will move up to a five star before the end of the year. I just have to process it. I basically have to reread it because this book involves so much processing and I still don't entirely know how I feel about it. But again, if you're like me, if you were kind of getting burnt out by the same horror books over and over again, getting pushed out by all the major presses, this is one that just felt like a breath of fresh air. It was just different and dark and really going back to the roots of horror, which is really reflection back on humanity. And so if you're looking for that, I think this book will be a good pleaser for you. Now we also have Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier. This is a story that follows a few different perspectives, but the main one is that of a woman who is accused of killing her husband. Her husband is significantly older than her and has a lot of money. So it's very suspicious that it appears as if she was the cause of his death and murdered him and so she has to go and defend herself. This is a story that I thought had an interesting premise, but in terms of execution, it felt pretty flat because as I mentioned, it does follow a few different perspectives and timelines. It kind of shifts around in the story and I just didn't care about the other pieces. I wanted to get back to the main story and then the main story was just a little bit underwhelming as well. So if you can't tell, I was pretty disappointed by this one. The reason I picked it up is because I really love the author's previous work. Things like Creep and The Butcher are some of my all-time favorite thrillers and so I can't help but check out everything else that she puts out. But I do feel like her latest books have been a lot more commercial, a little bit more safe, and just a little bit more tropey, and I wish that she would go back to her roots and write a bit more raw, a bit more kind of gritty stories like she used to. So very disappointed, unfortunately. Finally, we have You Will Know Me by Megan Abbott, and this is a story that follows a family whose young daughter, Devin, is an aspiring Olympic athlete. She is a very talented gymnast, and so we followed her through through her life, or her young life at least, as she is coming of age as a young girl to a woman and competing and training for what hopes to be an Olympic event. Within the narrative, there is a tragic death that takes place and you get to find out how that affects not only Devon but the rest of her family. And so this is a book that kind of blends some genres. I'm putting it in this video because it has elements of a thriller with the murder mystery, but it also, I will admit, reads a little bit more like contemporary or women's fiction than some of the other books I normally review on my channel, so it's kind of an edge case for me to even be discussing this book. I picked it up because Megan Abbott is one of those authors who I describe to be one of my favorite authors, but yet she never writes my favorite books. This book, while I love the premise, I love the setup, still only ended up being a three and a half star read, and it was just the fact that it had so much potential, but it really just didn't come together very well. The narrative ended up being very meandering and the ending, while it had a little bit of a surprising twist, was overall kind of underwhelming. But there is something about Megan Abbott's stories, what she chooses to tell. She writes these incredible fierce feminine narratives where she really delves into the darker side of being a woman and her prose especially. I really encourage you, for those of you that do audiobooks, to try out the audiobook version of her work because her prose have a beautiful rhythm to them that you really notice when the words are spoken out loud. And so I think that she's a brilliant author in terms of prose, but her books just never quite make the mark. One of her books is gonna end up being a five-star read for me. I know it is. Dare Me by her, her young adult book, is oh so close, but not not quite. Again, her books are just a little bit ragged and a little bit unfinished. They just feel not quite perfect, but they have so much potential that I just cannot stop reading her. Let me know if anyone else has this same experience with an author where they have the potential to be a favorite and you can't stop reading them because they're almost perfect, but they never quite hit that mark perfectly and give you that five-star experience that you know they are totally capable of giving you. Tell me if anyone else has had this experience with Megan Abbott or someone else because 
oh, the struggle is real. So that's it for this video here. I'd love to hear of the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? And I'd love to hear if there is an author that has favorite potential that they never quite live up to, just like with me and Megan Abbott. If you're new to my channel, you please consider subscribing. I do read a lot of adult horror, thrillers, fantasy, science fiction, and true crime. If you want to help me out more, you can give this video a thumbs up, share it around online, drop a comment, even if just a little emoji, like, I don't know, figure out an emoji for a home invasion. Maybe I don't want to see those, but get creative. And if you want to help me out more, you can click that little notification bell. That way I'll never miss another video from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.